Good afternoon and welcome to this tutorial from Android TV Boxes. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to show you how to install the iStream component on your XBMC slash Kodi installation. So I'm currently working on Gotham version 13.2. Um, it's a virgin install. It doesn't matter whether you're using Windows, Linux, Mac or an Android device on your phone or your tablet. Um, and it also doesn't matter whether you've got add-ons already or whether your box is virgin like this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually add a file source. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to browse over to the system tab and we're going to go down to file manager and we're going to be presented with uh, two panels, an A and a B. On the A side we're going to add source and this is going to bring up a pop-up which is going to allow us to either select a local source or enter a URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter a URL of http colon slash slash xfinity.zunitytalk.com So this is going to add a file location to an online resource and it's going to allow us to download and install files from that online resource. I'm going to name it .xu because the dot signifies it's going to be above the alphanumerical uh, filter that's already in place and I've accepted that. What we need to do now is we need to actually install an add-on. So we're going to go to add-on under systems, install from zip file, the blade will appear from the right hand side and as you can see .xu is at the top. So I'm going to open that up. This is now browsing the Zunity online resource and I'm going to select the Zunity Talk repository. Okay, difference between a repository and an add-on is as follows. A repository is an online um, data bucket of add-on information that you can install add-ons from. Developers create repositories when they are uh, constantly changing add-ons and making any sort of uh, improvements or amendments that are required. If you download an add-on from a repository and the developer makes a change inside the repository, you are pushed the latest version. If you download just the add-on, you don't get any fixes or any changes. So, as you can see, I'm on a Windows device here. Um, so the, I've installed that add-on uh, repository now. So what I need to do is I actually want to install the iStream add-on. So inside the same system here under add-ons, I'm going to go to get add-ons and I'm going to browse the Zunity Talk repository. So this is their online repository. And I'm going to go to video add-ons and then I'm going to scroll down. You can see here all the add-ons that are available. Uh, just so you can be aware that this one here that says broken .net, it basically means that the, the add-on itself has been broken inside the repository and won't install. You may also find incompatible as well listed inside this, uh, this menu system here. So we're going to select iStream, bring up the, uh, the add-on information by just clicking on it or pressing OK. And it's now installing. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner I've got additional add-ons now being enabled. The reason this has happened is because the add-on of iStream itself has actually got some requirements and those requirements are that specific add-ons get installed for me. Now the way that an add-on works inside XBMC is that this list of requirements are automatically downloaded and installed for you providing that they're accessible inside the add-on repositories that you have installed on your machine. If you don't have those repositories installed the download will fail and it will come up with dependencies not met. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main screen and you can see under videos and add-ons that the iStream component is installed. Now there are two ways of installing iStream. The first way is Zunity actually publish an iStream installer but I have found in my experience and through looking around on the Facebook groups and interacting with the people that we do interact with on these groups that the iStream installer actually presents more issues than it's actually resolving. Now that's not to say that there is an issue with the iStream installer it just means that of the times that I've seen it being used we've just had problems. I'm sure there are thousands of people out there who have used it successfully and have had no issues with it. I personally like to reinstall it from scratch and then set it up from scratch. So that's the second way really is downloading it yourself as I've done here and installing it. So I'm going to open iStream and you're going to be presented with a familiar menu system. What we're actually going to do is go down to settings and then going to go to movies. 
Okay, and under the general tab, I'm going to enable autoplay. I'm going to change the time to two seconds. And the reason for that is as follows. When I'm attempting to play a film, a movie or a TV show or whatever content from my stream, if it fails, you get presented with the error cannot play or play file. If you wait two seconds, that message disappears and then it tries the next source. So we have indexes and sources as an available tab. Indexes are basically an online list of movies or TV shows that you can watch. So when you go to iStream and you go to most popular, you're actually querying the indexer for the available, um, you know, the, the content that's available. So we're here looking at IMDB as our indexer. So when we go to most popular, it pulls the information from the IMDB most popular feed and then presents those films available. Doesn't necessarily mean that what's available inside an index is available as a source. A source is an online re um, resource of where the movie files or video files are kept, but they don't necessarily tie up to each other. So just because, say for example, um, Interstellar is the latest film out right now, just because it's in the most popular list doesn't mean that there's a source for it. So bear that in mind, when you are looking through iStream uh, or any of the other add-ons that use a very similar process, you may see a list of films when you open it, there's nothing in there. The reason being is the two don't tie up yet. How can you have a film of something that's not even been out at the cinema? For example, the new um, Hunger Games film. It exists in the most popular lists, but it's not available to play because it's not out yet. So we're going to go under sources and we're going to see here these are a load of sources that are available to watch. Now I'm not going to touch these at the moment, I'm going to leave these as they are just to show you it working. And I'm going to press OK and I'm going to do the same with TV shows. So select autoplay, change the time to 2 and then just press OK. Now that's made the change for me. So what I'm going to do is come out of iStream, go back into it to allow it to reset all the settings. Uh, so refresh those settings and confirm that they're in place. I've gone to movies and I'm going to go to most popular. And if we wait a few seconds what it's going to do is poll the indexes, get a list of most popular films. Um, it's then going to put them into a table of about 10 or 12, depending on the skin that you're using, um, to display that as an available uh, set of films to watch. Again, remember, they don't necessarily tie up to sources. If the source isn't available, the most popular list will still display it. There is no way of saying, uh, if, the, if the source, if the index exists, don't, don't show it. For example, Avengers, Age of Ultron. So, this is a very new film that's coming out. Um, you can see here that we've already got like a, a, some fan art, which is the information at the back. We've got a story uh, information and we've also got a CD cover. There is no way that we're going to have a film for it. So if we open it up, just for example, uh, it will actually be blank. Or it will say open in stream, but it won't do anything because there is no stream to play. So we'll cancel that and close that down. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do though is show you a film that does exist and I know it exists right now. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm going to select it. Now what it's going to do is it's going to poll the sources that we've got set up inside iStream. We will get an error message and if we watch what happens, I'm not going to touch the keyboard or the mouse or anything. It's going to come up with a playback failed. It's then going to disappear and it's going to try again. So it's now trying different sources. And then essentially what will happen is it will find a resource. So this resource, for example, flew up a error message in the bottom right hand corner um, and it caused an error. This one, however, has found it. And as you can see, it's in a 720p copy. So I'm going to stop that because I don't want to get done for any copyright infringement. So there we have it. That's iStream installed on XBMC slash Kodi, regardless of whether it's a Virgin box or it has information installed. This is Android TV Boxes. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or queries. Come and find us on Facebook at slash Android TV Boxes. That's B-O-X-E-S. Uh, also hit subscribe as well and keep a tune on all my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.